tastes just like home. And I'm really happy to be having lunch right now. Aloha friends and welcome to Eating Richly where we cook mostly healthy, affordable, family-friendly recipes rich in nutrition and flavor. If you're new here, I'm Diana Johnson, cooking instructor and food blogger, and I would love for you to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. And I am so excited because today we are going on a wild ride cooking four different make-ahead lunches. student, a parent, a busy working professional, or all of the above, it can be really easy to forget to eat lunch. It's already one o'clock and I still haven't eaten lunch today. <laughs> but lunch is such an important part of fueling your brain and your body for the second half of your day. So today we are doing lunch together and I'm going to show you how to make fried rice, broccoli tortellini salad, Parmesan tilapia and pizza stuffed breadsticks. Each of these is really easy to make and can be divided into individual portions to keep in your fridge for lunches that week. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get cooking because whether you're cooking with someone, for someone, or for yourself, cooking time is connecting time. First up is my perfect Hawaiian fried rice recipe. I use Spam for the fried rice in the video, which shouldn't surprise you if you've seen my Spam Musubi video. I'm a little obsessed. But you can also swap the Spam for a leftover meat, like chicken or sausage, or just skip the meat altogether. We're going to start by mixing one quarter cup of soy sauce, one quarter cup of rice vinegar, a teaspoon of sesame oil, and a teaspoon of sugar or your favorite sugar substitute. Once it's all mixed and the sugar is dissolved, we're going to add in one can of chopped Spam. Make sure the Spam is all covered in the marinade and set it aside. If you're using a leftover meat like teriyaki chicken or Chinese sausage, something that's already flavored, skip the marinade part, just chop it up and you're gonna add it in at the end of cooking. Next, crack two eggs into a bowl and whisk them well. Pour the eggs into a non-stick skillet on high heat and add a teaspoon of sesame oil. Use a silicone spatula to scrape and push the eggs around as they cook. Then remove the scrambled eggs while they are still slightly wet. They're going to finish cooking in the fried rice. Use a slotted spoon to get your chopped Spam out of the marinade and then begin frying it in the same skillet. But make sure to save that marinade. Cook the Spam until it's nice and crispy, then remove it from the pan. Now you're going to heat two tablespoons of rice oil or avocado oil in the pan and add four cups of day old rice. It's really important not to use fresh rice when making fried rice. You want it to be at least a day old and have been stored in the refrigerator. Just crumble the rice apart with clean, dry hands and then let it sit in your pan for a couple minutes to start to heat up. Mix the rice and let it sit a couple minutes more. You really don't want to do a lot of stirring when you make fried rice because that can activate the starches in the rice and make them gummy instead of actually getting fried. Now add one diced red onion, four cloves of minced garlic, one diced red bell pepper, half a cup of frozen peas, and half a cup of frozen corn. Mix everything together, then again, let it sit and wait patiently. You can flip sections of the rice once in a while. Basically, you're trying to get crispy bits of rice as the vegetables cook and soften. Once your veggies are softer and most of the rice is crispy, add in your almost cooked scrambled eggs and your cooked Spam. Gently mix those in and then grab that marinade we were saving. Start adding it in about a tablespoon at a time, tasting as you go. I also add a little bit of salt to bring out all the flavors. Then pull your fried rice off of the stove and you are ready to eat. Mm. It tastes just like home. And I'm really happy to be having lunch right now. 
Up next, we have our broccoli tortellini salad, which is another veggie packed lunch. You are going to need to cook a 10 ounce package of tortellini before you can make the salad. This is basically just a folded pasta filled with cheese that you can get usually in the cheese dairy section of the grocery store and it's going to be refrigerated and it'll cook in just a few minutes in boiling water. Just follow the instructions on the package. To start making your salad, dump 4 cups of chopped broccoli florets into a big bowl. The florets are the fuzzy treetop part of the broccoli, not the thick stem at the base. Next you need to add the cooked and drained tortellini. Then comes a cup of raisins, a cup of walnut pieces, a cup of finely chopped red onion, and six pieces of chopped bacon. Use a big spoon to mix everything together, then we're ready to make the dressing. In a smaller bowl, add half a cup of mayonnaise, quarter cup of honey, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and a bit of salt and pepper. Whisk it all really well with a fork, then dump it right onto your salad. Use your big spoon to stir the dressing into the salad until everything is coated. Broccoli coated in dressing holds its texture a lot better than lettuce or other greens when they're coated in dressing, so it is okay to go ahead and dress the salad in advance. That said, you can totally keep the dressing and the salad separate and just mix them together when you're ready to eat it. Now, whether you love seafood or you just want a simple protein option, you are going to love this Parmesan tilapia. Start by buttering a rimmed baking sheet really well. Lay five or six raw tilapia fillets on the baking sheet. You also need to preheat the broiler of your oven. Next, in a bowl, you need half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, the zest and juice of half a lemon, four tablespoons of softened butter, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, three tablespoons of chopped green onion, and a teaspoon of chopped basil. Add in a quarter teaspoon of your favorite seasoning salt. You can use any seasoning salt you have, Old Bay, Johnny's, Mrs. Dash, Creole seasoning, whatever you like, and a little dash of hot sauce. Now mix everything together really well. Now pop the pan of tilapia into the oven on the top rack, just a few inches below the broiler. Broil it for just three minutes, then take it out and spread that cheesy seasoning mix over each filet. Broil the fish for another three to five minutes until the cheese is golden and bubbly. Your fish should easily come apart with a fork and it's delicious, reheated, or even cold. Our last make-ahead lunch today is these super fun pizza stuffed breadsticks that only take a few ingredients to make. Start the recipe by preheating your oven to 425 degrees and spraying a baking sheet with cooking oil. I love the convenience of spray oil, but if you don't have that, you can also just rub a little oil on the baking sheet. The first ingredient is a can of refrigerated pizza dough. This is going to be in a refrigerated case, usually around the dairy section of the grocery store with the cans of crescent rolls, biscuits, and cookies. Lay the dough on a piece of parchment paper and slice it into six rectangles. Now spread five slices of pepperoni down the middle of each rectangle, leaving room at both ends. Next, you're going to place a mozzarella string cheese stick on top of the pepperoni. Fold the sides of your dough up over the cheese stick and then fold the ends over, pinching the dough together to seal everything inside. The next step is totally optional, but you can add some extra flavor to the breadsticks by mixing one quarter cup of melted butter with half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then brush that all over both sides of your breadsticks. And if you don't have some sort of pastry or basting brush, you can just use clean dry fingers or a spoon. Next, I like to sprinkle the breadsticks with some coarse salt, like kosher salt, and a bit of Italian seasoning. Place that baking sheet on the rack in the middle of the oven and bake for 10 to 12 minutes. Your breadsticks should be a beautiful golden color. 
If you like cold pizza, you can totally eat these cold later or reheat 30 seconds at a time in the microwave or five minutes in a 425 degree oven. I like dipping mine in marinara sauce to make it taste even more like pizza. I'm gonna keep digging into this fried rice now, but I hope that these recipes gave you some ideas for your lunchtime, and I would love to hear in the comments which one you're excited to try. And remember, whether it's with me, in the comments, or out in the world, you can be real and be kind. If you like this multiple recipe video style, I've got one for creative taco dinners over here, and you can check out my Hawaiian spam musubi over here. I'll see you in the next video. Aloha Green River College. Already. First words out of my mouth. I mess up. And remember, whether it's with me in the comments or out in the world, in the comments or out in the world, you can be real and be kind. Perfect.